Yep. Wow. Yep. That's a big milestone. How does it feel? Old. <laughs> How old are you now? 41. 41? Yeah. And... Yeah, the funny thing is, we didn't really realize it until last week. It just kind of popped up in my head, and I went walking across the office and said, Hey, do you guys know that it's our 10th anniversary next week? Yep. Already. And we're like, oh, okay. So we're kind of looking for things to do. Can't do a big party or anything like that. So this live was uh, yeah. a way for us to get attention. I mean, a way for us to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm look dealing with us. for 10 years. Look at me, look at me. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> so looking back, years and obviously it's a long time but do you Is remember it? when you first started you know where you were then versus now like a lot has changed yeah. is there any really big memorable moments either fun challenging with you two well there's definitely more challenging ones than fun ones i think it's just the nature of business as well but uh but and i also like when I remember just some conversation we had 10 years ago, I think it's fair to say that we're complete different people. You know, we, we did change a lot and... Uh, that's true, yeah, yeah, that's true. Some of the convos that we would have uh, were quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it, it's funny, whenever I think of those first few years, all I think of is uh, a lot of uh, pain and suffering. Yeah. <laughs> it was so hard. hard, it was so hard, and looking back though, we just, because we were just doing things wrong, we weren't, yeah. you know, we, look, we had no roadmap, we had no uh, roadmap, so we just made a lot of mistakes, and um, you know, it was just really, and uh, I like what he said because, I like what Raf said because it's not only the company that's changed, it's us individually that have changed yeah. also, you know, like, I remember the first year or so, it would be like, uh, some little challenge would happen and then everyone would like freak out and I, I don't know how to explain it, but now it's like, you know, I guess it's from all the training that we've done yeah. with, uh, with coaches and everything. Uh, well, plus really learning helped. from mistake too. Yeah, learning from mistakes. Our yeah. business model today is because of everything we've lived over. Like maybe I, I don't know. I don't know how long we've had this business model. Maybe a few years, but it's a result of everything that we've lived yeah. those first years. You know, all the mistakes we've made. Well, I think it's nature of business that you go through a problem, you solve that problem. Another problem, you solve that other problem. And eventually you end up trying to solve all of the problem, which it's not possible, but in the end you, you still have more solutions than problems. So I guess before when we started, we had a lot of problems, not much solutions. And now it's more like this, like <laughs> small problems, but a lot of solutions. Yeah. yeah. And we just make decisions based on what we thought was right. You know, we never asked yeah. clients or asked developers what they thought if this was a good solution. We would just kind of brainstorm together and say, yeah, okay, this you, is it. But you know what? You know what? I'm not sure, I'm not sure we would be here today if we would not have done that. Because if you try mm. to get the perfect solution every time, you will make much, much less calls along the way and you will learn much less too. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. You know, as, as soon, and whenever you make a decision and you try that and it doesn't work, then you try something else and it doesn't work and you try something else. Yeah. But if you always try to get the perfect solution and you try one thing for a, for a while, you don't know about the two other things. Yeah. So it's, there's pros and cons to that. That's for sure. Yeah. We have our first question on Facebook. Oh, Rico. Oh. He cool. wants to know... Who is this plans? Rico guy? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't remember do we, seeing a Rico here. Do we know anyone named Rico? He wants to know, what were your plans 10 years ago before 2010? <laughs> Did 
Can you imagine a company like Simply PHP existing? I'll answer first, I think. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Um, what plan? Well, that's it. <laughs> you know, we were, we were in those first few years, we were actually trying to come up with an idea that was going to be yeah. our idea that we would build because we had all the developers and make millions. Like that was, uh, that was our thing. We were trying to find what's the next best thing. You know, we created um, some applications, not mobile apps, but web apps. We created a, a software for fitness trainers and we thought that that was going to be the big thing and be hugely successful. Um, so in those earlier years, we were less concentrated on providing services for yeah. our clients. That was kind of like a also ran type of thing, right? Yeah. It was like, okay, yes, we're providing development services for clients, but we're also, hey, we're going to invent this new app that's going to succeed and make us millions. But then we realized after a few years that that was causing us to lose focus. And then we said, you know, after a few failures, so like that fitness uh, software was yeah. a massive failure. Um, there was a couple other things that just didn't work. And we said, you know what, we're going to concentrate on providing services to clients and that's how we're going to make our business. Yeah. yeah. And that was a, another little mini turning point, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. That was yeah. what, 2012 maybe? 2012, yeah. yeah. When did we do the trade show? fitness uh, trade show? The Camp Fit Pro in it's Toronto? It's 2011 or 2012. Because oh, it took, a, oh, yeah. You see, that's that's what we're feeling like. That it, it's because we built the software for personal fitness trainers and fitness coaches. We did not ask any advice from them what they actually wanted. We just assumed we knew what they wanted, and in reality, they didn't want to spend hours a day in front of the computer running this software. They wanted to be in the gym training clients. We uh, we learned that pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, and the other way. We thought we were gonna sign up, so we bought these little uh, iPods at the time. In 2011, there was a little square iPod, you know, that you click on your sleeve. Sh oh, iPod yeah. shuffle, I think. The shuffle. Yeah, the yeah. shuffle. Yeah. iPod shuffle? I think it's shuffle or not. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we bought a thousand of them. We went to this trade show and we said, okay, we got a thousand, we should get a thousand signups. And we even had a contingency plan if we ran out of those thousand. Like we had an Apple store in Toronto standing by for us. And I think we signed up like three people. <laughs> that was terrible. And, oh, and, and, you know, and you know what? It's Our so way of thinking at the time was that the cost of that shuffle was more than the subscription to the product we're offering. So it's yeah, yeah. more than winning. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you sign up something for twelve bucks a month, and you get like a fifty dollar yeah. iPod Shuffle or whatever. I don't remember how much they cost it. Yeah, that was about that. How much they cost? I mean, yeah. That was. But that I think I think after that debacle, we said, you know what? Let's just concentrate on being a service company, because that's what we are. We are a service company, and. It's funny, we get prospects that call us and they want to, hey, you know, I'm building this uh, new software. Do you want to partner with us or you'll have some equity and all this stuff? And the answer is always no. It's like... And we, yeah, and we, had, we had so many opportunities like that. Yeah, we just, we just concentrate on providing services. And probably that we passed on something, mm. but that was just not to lose focus, right? Yeah, so... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's and uh, uh, honestly, that's that's one of the times when we started succeeding a little bit, is when we started focusing on uh, on you know being a service company, and that's super important as opposed to trying to do the next best biggest thing, yeah, becoming the next Facebook or whatever. So, so Rico was asking if what was the plan, right? Oh yeah, what was his question? And, that and, guy. And what were the, your plans ten years ago? Uh, oh. Before 2010, and did you imagine uh, a company like Simply PHP existing? So plans, and did you think that what you have now would exist in this year, 2020? Maybe not in the exact format. We knew, we kind of knew that we would get to this point or even bigger, um, but maybe not in this format because now, now for those for those watching. Go back 10 years ago, okay? 
development e-commerce had barely started. Like around end of the two thousand, the first decade of two thousand, um, there was a recession, and and we were getting back into into business normally, and uh, and um, and what I was saying. Oh yeah, development. You so said e-commerce had barely yeah. started in twenty ten. Yeah. So that service, we saw the potential. And uh, and at the time, it was common for people to, and I, even even still today, that still exists. But common for people, I want to develop this thing, as big as it is or as small as it as it is. It's written on a sheet of paper, you know, just on this little sheet, few details, how much this costs. And we thought that this was the way to do business, right? So we started to give quotes and lose extreme amount of money. <laughs> and, and um, so when we think about it, when we, when we would think about it at the time as, let's say, in 2020, that was still that. Like, okay, we're, we're going to be doing RFPs, getting big projects, giving a estimate quote, whatever it is, fixed price. And, but that thing has evolved a lot. So yes, yes and no to his question because it's quite different today, but it's mm -hmm. structure-wise, it's similar, I think. It's similar. Yeah. But honestly, I thought we would be bigger than we are now, um, but I think growing as we grew um, with a zero debt philosophy, yeah. um, so I guess they call it like growing organically, like uh, yeah. Cousin Nick used to say, um, kind of, forced us to grow slowly plus the concept that we have where you know we don't outsource all of our resources come to work nine to five this is pre-covid obviously um caused us to grow slower i mm -hmm. guess you know which is fine yeah i'm feeling comfortable now I'm, I'm i'm ready to start growing uh much faster now with yeah uh, that's for sure with the setup that we have yeah yeah and and for sure like you would get you know, big loans and, and there's many things. There's a there's a lot of fake in in, in any type of business mm -hmm. that we see business growing as like, like crazy, but really they're they're like this all the time. And, and 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 we see it these days with all those companies that are closing because they mm -hmm. have too much of that. Um, you know, yeah, it brings benefit. It brings big stress too, and we were just not ready to go through that. And uh, yeah, and, and but yeah, it forced us to grow much lower than 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 obviously a company that gets many millions in investment and and, and loan and and big cr credit line. We don't even have a credit line, you know. So that was um, I remember when uh, I don't want to talk about COVID too much, but um, I remember when COVID happened in March when it first broke I was so happy that we were debt free <laughs> I was like I was like oh my gosh because I was so nervous you know you don't know what yeah back in March 15th for example when we started everyone started closing I was like man this is the apocalypse and I'm like you know starting to think of our employees starting to think about uh, layoffs and starting to think you know um, but being debt free is uh, huge 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 um, I, I don't think that was part of Rico's no. question, but it was a really good question, Rico. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Rico's uh, often at our. That's we're kind of uh, razzing him because yeah. Rico's at our uh, live events always. Yeah, yeah, all the time. He's always got good questions, so we love Rico wherever <laughs> you are. Yeah. And, and you know about about the growth too. Um, so yeah, financial, but also there's many other things about that. I mean that about, that slowed down the growth. Because there's many companies like us that charge way more than we do. Yeah. We just don't see that that to be fair. Um, that underpay the people or pay mm -hmm. less their people than we do. Don't pay yeah. the overtime and all of that. Uh, plus, we wanted to have a place where it's fun to be and work. Yeah, it is fun to be. And uh, so we're definitely not perfect, but I think we're quite good. Rico has a follow-up. <laughs> Go ahead. 
Uh, so he said, in Brazil, I've worked for more than 10 years for a company just like Simply PHP. Do you think that's a big tip for success? I remember uh, enjoying working, enjoying sharing, and, and you know meeting new people. Um, do you think that's a tip, like having a um, a friendly environment? Definitely, of? definitely. Yeah, it's huge because uh, we try both ways. The first few years we're in business, uh, man. Uh, the environment in the office was kind of crappy. And I've been coached this way too. Yeah. You know, I've been coached like it was in the 70s. And, and yeah. that was the context of that time, not these, these days, where you, 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 have to be, you have to be strict. And, and it's not a place to have fun, but to, to work. And, and, but if, if you enjoy, and if you, if you, first, if you like going to work and you enjoy what you do, and already there, you just did 80% of the work, right? As opposed to enjoy your work 20% of the time and the 80% of the rest is, is bullshit. Right? Uh, yeah, and uh, pe people have so many other options too, you know? Like if, if you're not happy with where you're working, and you're a good programmer, or a good sysadmin, or a good designer, yeah. you can just, you know, go across the street and until you find the place where you're happy. You gotta be happy at work, that's for sure. Yeah. You spend, if, you if spend you a third of your day, yeah. please. If you can, if you can be happy, like if you're, you know, in a, in a job where your options are extremely limited, you really just have to hope for the best and hope you have a good environment and a good boss and yeah. all of that stuff. But if you have a lot of options open, there's no reason to tolerate being unhappy at work. You know, you know, you know it's funny because, and, and that subject came, came to me lately, and, and, and I've been, like I was saying, I've been coached like it was in the 70s and 80s, and, and, and where you don't, f get too friendly with staff too, right? Mm -hmm. And I kind of put that aside a long time ago, as you did. And honestly, I think it serves us more than it deserves us. Like, yeah, absolutely. Because it's so, it's so um, easy to talk with us and us talk with the staff that mm -hmm. communication just flows all the time. If there's an issue, it flows. It's, yeah. yeah, that's that is it. Now, how if you have something to discuss or address with your boss, and the boss is very like cold-blooded and, and elite. Do you play video games with uh, some of the employees at Simply PHP? Uh, that I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard about that. Does Rico? Did Rico mean that he uh, the the company that he was in? in Brazil was the same type of culture as this? Yeah, he said oh. Um, oh, that's cool. a co company friendly base like Simply PHP. So I oh, that's cool. That's, good. that's good. That's good. That's cool. Like, uh, that's cool. Yeah. All right. So we any, uh, did we get some questions by email or? Nothing that I have seen, but let me refresh. But um, another question is you guys have been working together for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So not only the business, mm -hmm. is there anything that you learned from each other? in the last 10 years? Um, something that Rap does, that you adopted Tony, or vice versa? Well, it's like a, it's like a relationship, right? It's the same, it, that's the exact same way. And, and, and both people, I mean, any partners are different, and what makes sense for one doesn't make sense for the other, mm -hmm. often, and it's normal. Uh, but it takes time to to learn because to look in the first few years like we pull our hairs more than once you know and um <laughs> nowadays it's good it's good and but there was a lot of work to do a lot of learning and uh, need to understand what one's needs uh, yeah it's it's funny when we first started working together the first like let's say six months we were talking french to each other so I was the one with the broken language trying to get my point across in French and his English wasn't what it is today, you know, like, he, but it was still much better than my French. So that's how we started. Like, yeah. it's, it just goes to show you how not in sync we were at the beginning, but 
I, I think to answer my my view of of uh, your question is, um, I think what's cool is that we share a lot of stuff together. So, like for example, if I'm watching a video, uh, self help, like Anthony Robbins' video, which is how you know. Raph and I got really into Anthony Robbins. I was kind of already into him, and I started sharing videos with him. Anytime he shares a video with me from someone like, I don't know, Gary Vee or some other person, we always watch each other's recommendations and try to put them in place, you know? It's, it's like hugely important, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's like kind of, you know, when you want to read the same book as your friends and you know, I think the best thing an employee can ever do is when he walks into a boss's office and sees what books he's reading, go buy those books and read them. Because you'll know, you know, what level your boss, the way your, your boss is thinking, right? So it's the same with business yeah. partners. If I send him Anthony Robbins videos or Brian Tracy or Jay Abraham and he never looks at them, then we kind of won't be in sync, I don't think. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, you end up disconnecting. Yeah, so I think that was hugely important. Uh, yeah, learning together, grow together, yeah, yeah. all of this together. We yeah. went on a couple of seminars together too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long weekends, walks on the beach. Nothing no, like no, no. <laughs> no. We 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 also have this uh, <laughs> this mentality of not traveling too much together. Yeah, you know, we don't so travel together. We're supposed to, we were supposed to go in California in May in March, and uh, we would have yeah. took two planes. So. Um, we yeah. don't get in the same car. Yeah. yeah. Just because we don't want, you know, it's might be sound crazy, but we don't want something to happen and the company not survive, you know. So we kind of uh, keep our distance when we're traveling and stuff like that. Yeah. But, um, we also disconnect on the weekends. You know, I've learned uh, recently, it might be a little bit off topic, topic, but I've I've learned recently to kind of disconnect on the weekends, which was never really an option in the early years. No. Nope. But it is now. Um, yeah. So we kind of disconnect from each other on the weekends too. So when I come back to work on Monday morning, and 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 Raf does, we're kind of excited to see each other. Like, okay, how was your weekend? You know, we we'll, we call it the life slice, uh, yeah. <laughs> life slice hour. You know, we talk about our personal lives yeah. and stuff, and what we did on the weekend. It's kind of cool, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. You can yeah. tell you guys are like only business partners, but like really good friends oh, yeah, for working sure. together for such a long time, right? We're like brothers. Yeah. 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 You know, brothers aren't always in sync, but most of the time they are. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they fight, like the bloopers, you know, tickle each other. Yeah, but that's tickling, man, you know. Uh, question <laughs> for, <laughs> from Eric. He wants to know, Eric. what was your best moment in the last 10 years, and if possible, can you say the worst? Mm. If possible. I think it's I think it's gonna be an individual answer. Yeah, I I think I know what my best moment is. Well, I'm gonna think the past about ten it. years. I think the the um, prison project mm -hmm. to me was the best moment of uh, the past ten years. The um, for those of you that don't know, we teamed up with the Anthony Robbins Foundation, and we. Um, put Anthony Robbins's Anthony Robbins's yeah. entire collection in every Canadian prison, uh, Canadian federal prison. So that sounds easy, but it took about a year to make happen. And the Anthony Robbins Foundation was just awesome. They really, they're real. They they really yeah. want to help. And um, yeah, to make a long story short, we got Anthony Robbins's entire book collection and I believe some audio uh, collections as well in each uh, Canadian federal penitentiary, men and women. And uh, yeah, Corre Corrections Canada helped us uh, with that too. And it took about a year. The delay was on the prison side, of course, you know, the Anthony Robbins was yeah. like, uh, Let, <laughs> like Let's go, let's work. do it, yeah, yeah. You know, they paid for, they paid for everything. It, yeah. was, it, was, it was fantastic. But it took a while for the prison system to get their red tape uh, in order. Um, but yeah, to me, that was, wow. It's still, it's still something that... Yeah, that was definitely me. a good one. I'm trying if, to, to think if that was my best one. Yeah. Uh, because there was many, like from that yeah. to uh, announcing to an employee that we got his work permit. 
Uh, oh, the work or, permits. That's right. Or a gift that we give someone and start crying. And, you know, yeah. all of those moments are super nice. So it's hard for me to say. Like, any time that I had it here, I'm yeah. like, is it, is it actually the best moment? You know? Yeah. It's true. The work permit is, uh, I think, what is it, maybe four or five different yeah we did it often people that we sponsored they came over yeah. mostly from south america and yeah. the day that we announced that they got their work permit to them that was yeah that's true those are really good there's many ones like i think that was more for you because you were more yeah. involved with yeah. the uh, logistics of, uh, of yeah. all of that eh? or even 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 like um something that happened at the beginning of the year I, in this office I, I one day i come and i have a little sticky a sticker of oh. a heart on my monitor. I'm that like, really, you really like that, eh? I'm like, that really man, meant a lot to you. That's cool. Like, that's yeah. nice. Like, I yeah, like yeah. It. Who did that? Can Julia. you say? Julia. Oh, Julia. Yeah. So that was cool. You yeah, know. yeah, Julia. Nice. So, so, so I'll, it's hard for me to say which one. Like, there was many of those small ones or someone reaching out years after saying how much he learned or she learned and should not, should not have leave the company and whatever, like those mm. frank conversations were nice, you know? Um, you have to pick one. Can you do it? No. No? Okay. There's too many. <laughs> there's too many. There's well, too that's many. a good problem. There's too many. There's too many. Too many good well, as, as there's too many, um, you know, worst, worst, uh, worst thing. I don't know what my worst would be, but. It's, it's, it's hard to say too. I have many. Yeah. But uh, I, I guess any time that it was with an individual that either lied or had bad intention and mm. that happened quite often lied or had bad intentions yeah okay yeah that uh that whole because look we put our heart here right so yeah so when you have someone that does something not nice mm -hmm. it hurts it just hurts yeah when it when when there's mean yeah probably mm. those are my worst but mm. aside the fact that you know some clients did not pay or 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 screwed us or yeah. know, lost money or those things like i think i was mm. more hurt on the um, relationship level yeah okay yeah, yeah there, I'm, I'm actually grateful that there's no one bad moment that sticks out for me mm -hmm. yeah. many oh look there's just business challenges right yeah people people act certain ways it's 10 years right how many people have come through this office in 10 years so we're bound to have some uh, bad experiences bad experiences with clients um, um, yeah yeah, there's, there, there's, yeah. For me personally, I'm, I'm with you. There's yeah. no, there's no really one, one bad. Yeah, problem. I had, I had major ones <laughs> pre, pre 2010, but yeah. that's not simply PHP. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's cool. Um, another question was, what was the biggest challenge in getting your first client without a portfolio? <laughs> well, this is going to be an, another time for me to uh, talk about my cousin Nick. Because yeah. um, Nick was able to sell our services to people without a portfolio, without a track record, yeah. and he he landed us some major clients. Yep. Yeah. And it's funny he he his he got them he connected with them on LinkedIn somehow back when LinkedIn was uh, not what it is today, and um, yeah. So the question was, what was the challenge? What was the biggest challenge in getting your first client and then quotations without oh. the portfolio? Honestly, I didn't really live it because Nick was living it. And I don't know how many clients he contacted. He cold called um, yeah. before he got his first, uh, I think he got about three major clients. We had no track record. He was touting the fact that we were in Canada and in North America and um, not overseas and our account manager slash CTO at the time had a very thick Indian accent 
So even that was was challenging, right? Because he was he was sort of marketing that hey, you know, we're North American communications above board, and all of this stuff, and even that was a challenge. So yeah, yeah. he you know what you got to have the right salesperson. But you know, you know, I think I think I remember the first major client that we have. Yeah, we had and wasn't from was Nick. That? It was not from. No, I don't want to name it, but uh, yeah. a large public company. Oh yes, and, yes. And yes, it's yes. someone. I think, if I remember correctly, I've I've been introduced to someone, and it first we got this, the you know the foot in the door, and and slowly we did a lot of work there. But one yeah, of the major challenges that we had is that their payment term was crazy long. Oh yes. Ninety to hundred twenty days, and we were small. Right? Yeah, yeah, that was difficult. So, you know, three, four months without being paid and having to keep paying people and, and uh, <laughs> yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't the fault of the person that we were dealing with. It no, was no, just no. that company's, um, man, that was... Uh, it was just too much bureaucracy. It was hard to get paid yeah. from them. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. They ended up paying. But. Yeah. So that was definitely a challenge um, for the, f many challenge, but for the first line, yeah. But a track record to me is a little bit uh, funny because, anyway, that's, a, that's another subject, but you can have a track record, but if the resources that were a part of that track record are no longer there, then who does the track record belong to, right? Yeah. You know, you can have a developer that was a superstar that worked on this amazing project, and I'm going to showcase that on my website and say, yeah, we did this. But when someone calls a year later, that developer's either on another project or long gone, maybe. Yeah. So, but yeah, having a track record is still something. Uh... Another question came in. Um, in the past, uh, this is from Sean. So I'll read. I know in the past, company had several teams for several languages. <laughs> yeah. And then it was decided <laughs> that it would consolidate just the PHP. Yes. Are there any plans in the future to maybe bring some other languages back to expand uh, across like uh, the web, or maybe just expand to different platforms such as mobile applications? Uh, to bring back, I don't know. To get into new, maybe. Um, but there's some. The thing is, many languages that we did work with. The reason we stop is not just, you know, it's not just practical reason. It's because we didn't feel that it was serving the client's best interest compared to PHP. So if you take an, as an example, you take Ruby. Thank you. So Ruby Sorry. or Ruby on Rails, it's a great, great, great thing if you know how to work with it, if you have the resource. If you do it for yourself or, but for us at the time to do, to use this language for clients, we were already thinking in advance that if this client leaves us, in which, I mean, how is he or is she going to be when it's going to come to finding a new company or new people to work on? And, and, and there was not so many at that time good developers that with Ruby. And, and so that's one of the reason. Uh, whether it's .NET or C Sharp or those things, it's the same thing. And, and there's pretty much not, actually there's not much things that you cannot do with PHP. It's so powerful today, it's so good. Frameworks are great. Uh, there's still 78, 80% of the internet made with that. Uh, Facebook has still some. Um, we're not 20 years ago, right? So there's not much you cannot do with it. And plus, it's, it's cheaper for people. Um, and, and, and if they don't want to work with us anymore, they won't have a hard time finding a new team. And that's important. We don't want a client call back six months after saying, why you guys let me work with blank? I'm not able to find people, and when I find them, they're three three hundred dollars an hour. Like, you, we don't want that, and it's it would not be serving their best interest. So, uh, are we close? I mean, there's there's 
new technologies after I've, I hear that are very interesting, especially on mobile. Um, but I'm observing. I'm observing uh, these days. I'm, I'm, it, it's, it's also a lot of work to start on a new language. Um, so, yeah. You know, there's an, an analogy that I really like. It's if you're living on an island, all right, and there's 100 programmers on that island, and you have a business. It's your business. Your family is depending on your business. There's 100 programmers on that island. 80 of them are PHP developers. 10 of them are Ruby on Rails, and 10 of them are, or five of them are something else, and five of them are something else. You need to build your application on PHP. You know, if, you've, if you're on an island, there's 100 developers, and 80 of those developers are PHP developers. Yeah. And that's the reality in the world, I'm sorry. Uh, a lot of people are always talking about this language, this new this, this new that. You know what? 80 of the programmers on my island, and there's only 100, 80 of them are in PHP programmers. My business depends on these programmers. I'm not going to go grab one of these new languages where there's only five programmers on my island and they're charging three times as much as the other 80. It's just not going to happen. Now, if PHP didn't work properly, then that's another story. But guess what? PHP is awesome. So. Well, the two quick example. Python is, a, is around for a long time. Python? Okay. Yeah. But there's not so many people that are really good at it. And when you're really good at it, you have the salary that comes with it. <laughs> yeah. We, you were we put on a pedestal. And, uh, we, we had a client like this that knows a developer. Yeah, build my website on this. That's fine. I don't care. And mm -hmm. uh, they never rebuild it. Never, ever rebuild it. Oh, they never rebuilt it. Okay. Never. Because it, they, they were stuck with it. Yeah. They didn't have the resource and they didn't have the money neither. Uh, Golang is a new thing uh, for the past few years, and same thing. There's not so many. Mm. It seems great, but not so many. So if on that island there was 80 Python developers and 20 PHP developers, then I would say, yeah, go with Makes Python. Sense. Makes sense. Because they're all great languages. What knowledge do you Even have? Even Ruby? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. like Shopify is done with Ruby. It's going well. Still? Yeah. Yeah. As far as I know. But they had they had the resource. To PHP. They had the resource. I think the, the founder was also a Ruby developer. Okay. And uh, so you you build with the, the the knowledge that you have. Like if here yeah. we would have, we, yeah. if, if we want to build a new project tomorrow, not like the fitness uh, thingy, but let's say we want to build something new, and we have a bunch of guys that knows a new technology, and it will. We see that it will become very popular over time. Why not? But we wouldn't build something in Java tomorrow. Because you know? yeah, we don't have that res those resources. It's hard to predict what's going to be uh, yeah. good 10 years from, from now. Because look at, look at Ruby, right? Yeah. We, we thought Ruby was in, I think it was 2012, Ruby was a new thing. All of the young, hip programmers in Montreal, not all of them, but a lot of them wanted to get Ruby jobs. And you don't even hear about that anymore. No. So, uh, and and um, yeah. Mm. yeah. That was a good that question, though. That was from uh, Sean. That was from Sean. Yeah, okay. and, and and to end on that, we say PHP, but in relation with, I mean, we work with PHP mainly, and whatever can work with it. Yeah. You know, so sometimes we're gonna work with some Node or some Vue or some other out you know, uh, companions, let's call it. Yeah, uh, collaborators. But back in languages, it's something else. It's something else. I know Node.js is, is sometimes used for backend, but can also be used in collaboration, if I'm not mistaken. But um, but we, we use those things. Um, just that, like Python or Golang or Ruby or C Sharp or C or C++ and go on like this might not happen. Yeah, I know. Unless, unless it emerge as the next big thing and, and, and people are switching to it, mm. but um, we're not there yet. I love my island analogy. Yeah. I think I'm going to write it down. <laughs> I'll make a video. Yeah. If you're on an island, 
Uh, uh, so our first question from LinkedIn, Mohammed, who is a consultant of IT, he wants to know what is the most PHP framework used that sent to PHP? Laravel. Laravel for sure. Um, Good question, huh? Yeah, Laravel, 100%. Laravel was um, a decision we made in 2014, 14, 15, I think, yeah. because Laravel was kind of just starting and a lot of the guys in the office were really impressed with it. So we decided to, you know what, we're going to adapt Laravel. If we have a choice to choose the framework, it's going to be Laravel. And uh, wow, that was the right decision. And you know, I remember exactly when and where I was. Oh, yeah. When, when I told you, when I came to see you after, I said, yeah, that's, that's a good move. Yeah. And the reason, the main reason uh, I, I got convinced about Laravel mm -hmm. is when I started to look at the community and the documentation. The community and the documentation. Yeah. Okay. Already it, in 2014? That was, that was already extremely well done. Mm. There was answers for everything. The documentation was crazy. Some people say that Laravel, the framework Laravel, caused PHP to be even more dominant and caused PHP oh. to be even, even more concretely the best programming language, yeah. you know? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's very close. I mean, it's, it's a lot of, there's a lot of relationship between Laravel and Symfony. Mm -hmm. uh, Symfony has a bigger or longer LTS. Uh, LTS? Yeah, I think it's lifetime support. Okay. Lifetime support. I don't know. But um, basically, when you have an LTS version, is this one's going to be supported for a while. You know, you, mm -hmm. So there's going to be updates and all of that. Laravel is shorter. Um, yeah, Laravel's hot now, right? Laravel is like... Yeah. It's being used But we're far from uh, at the time with Zen or CakePHP and... Yeah. And yeah. Laravel on... Uh, Great question. We're in yeah. love with Laravel for sure. Um, next question on Facebook is from Steve. You guys have been known to surprise staff with gifts. <laughs> what is your favorite or most memorable gift that you've given oh. out in the past 10 years? Well, that's kind of easy, but at the same time... Easy? Yeah, it's kind of easy. Yeah? It's gift? just that, yeah. But it's kind of, it, the thing is, I, mm. I feel unfair to say it. Well, don't mention any names, but I, there's not a specific gift that really sticks out in my head, on unless your, I'm not thinking of it. On your cup there. Eh? On your cup there. Oh, yeah. That was nice. Yeah. Yeah? I, I find it quite nice. Yeah, we could, so, so a really memorable gift was when we gave one of our developers who's passionate about guitars, we gave him a Martin guitar. So That's Martin cool. guitar is uh, made in the USA. It's you know the most the best guitar in the world. I happen to be a fan of Martin guitars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was nice. That that was a nice gift. Yeah. That was a beautiful gift. I think the for me the the, the cash gift is kind of cool, like the gift card. The Amazon gift card yeah, ones are, sure, are sure, really yeah. cool. Like the last one, last Amazon gift card we gave to an employee was a thousand dollars, and it was just randomly because you know she was doing just an awesome job. Yeah. And I think it was the beginning of COVID, and yeah. uh, energy level was really high. So that that was very memorable for me. It was yeah, memorable. yeah, because you did it. Yeah, I did it exactly. Yeah, as I did for the other person. Uh, approximately I think it was the same amount for a yeah. gift card. Oh yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I think the reaction Yeah, that's a great the, question. The reaction has, has a lot to do in 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 how memorable it's going to be. I don't know who feels better, us or the person getting it. <laughs> I, think I feel we, so I, good I, giving I, things like that. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, it's almost yeah. selfish. Yeah. Like we do it for I get all us excited almost, like, and uh, emotional. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. That's a great question. Yeah. That was Steve. Steve. Um, Steve. Steve. The next question from Julian. On an e-commerce perspective, Ooh. we know that Magento is not suitable for every business, especially small and medium-sized businesses. Yeah. Do you plan to try using other tools like Shopify in the future to maybe acquire more clients, for example? 
I don't know. Personally, I don't know because we, where we're going these days might not align well with this. At the same time, if we would feel that we would bring a lot of value with this, we would probably do it. Um, so it's not in the short term plans for sure. Well, although we, we do help once in a while people with this, but, um, but it's not out of the equation, future, whatever, like it's, it, it might happen. It's always a matter of, are we bringing value and serving clients' best interests? If we don't feel good at the end of the day and sleep well, we're not doing it. We're not doing something for profit. Like, we, like I said initially. Profit like, alone. Yeah. Like yeah. I said initially, the, the, the cost that we're charging, some companies even here in Montreal charge double and triple. Yeah. And it's not fair. It's not fair. It's not worth that. I think also for me, it's uh, focus. I love being, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm just uh, not, you know, I'm not a developer yeah. or I don't have your technical uh, background, but for me, it's focus. And I know that we do, we have a Magento team. So yeah. I don't know, we have maybe five Magento developers. So it's laser focused on Magento. So I see these like Shopify and uh, WooCommerce and I see those as sort of distractions, and I don't think that an, unless you have a real, a really skilled team, and it goes to what Raf just said about adding value, unless you have a really, let's use Shopify, for example. If we had two or three Shopify experts here in the office with Simply PHP, then I would, I would be into it, you know? Yeah. But I don't want to take someone who's laser focused on Magento and say, hey, we happen to have a client that needs Shopify work done, and I want to make money, uh, can you try and do it? You know, we did that, man. We did that in 2011, 2012, and it was always a disaster, you know? Yeah. But Shopify is great, you know? Like I always say, Shopify is fantastic if you, as a client, if you're not sure if you have a business yet, you know? So if you're a startup and you have an idea and you haven't sold anything yet, Shopify is awesome. Or, or you'll be up and running in a day. Or if you don't need special features, yeah, just the well, base that's features. It, that's if you if your goal is to add to cart, pay, ship, perfect. I would I would I sign would up use for it. Shopify. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. But if I'm you know someone with actual like a, like a lot of sales and I need customization and I want to integration own, with the internal systems and other, yeah. you have no choice almost. And if you want to own your business too, like you anyway, know yeah. that's a whole massive subject we've got a few videos on that when i sat down with jason um yeah. our, we talked about magento versus shopify and yeah there's definitely times to use shopify but as a company as a company i'm like mr thinking inside the box like we are magento yeah. and i don't want to like to speak to what you said i don't want to try and shoehorn our business into somebody that wants shopify and potentially fail you know yeah I Great question, it. though. Who's that question from? Uh, Julian. Jillian? Julian. Julian. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rico Julian. asked another uh, question. Rico's still around? <laughs> We're going to have to pay him Doesn't for he work? asking questions like this. <laughs> <laughs> Rico's awesome. Uh, do you feel you have advantage over, example, 20 year old entrepreneurs since you were <laughs> there when the internet was born? And you've seen a lot of changes in improvements. There, there's no, there's, there's, there's no, there's no good answer to that because the 20 years old me at the time was not questioning much and just doing and not reflecting and just acting no matter what. So I think any 20 years old today, that's one of their big strengths, which us, we're thinking twice. Do we want that stress? Do we want to go back there again? Like, do we... You know, when you, when you spend years in trying to build something and finally you end up with great people that can do the work without you having to put your nose on, on, on them or on, on the work all the time. And, and it's not easy to go back there and say, okay. Uh, but, um, but you do have the experience that they don't. They're going to do all the mistakes that you did. But... 
what they're just going to be doing, right? Us, we're going to be doing after thinking. Yeah, we, we wear a belt and suspenders. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah. That's good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, like the, you can use it. Yeah. I got it from a movie. I got it. I can't remember which movie. A sales movie, though. Oh, yeah. Of course. Uh, Rigo replied, I'm working. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about 20-year-old entrepreneurs, is there any advice you'd give your younger self if you're starting this again, this whole 10 years? You know, what advice would you give to that younger Tony, that younger Raph, mm. uh, while you go on this journey? Oh, man. I uh, have so many. I've got some good ones, too. You start, who start? I would say, I'll start quickly. I would say... Number one most important thing is to stay out of debt personally and business. Stay out of debt personally and your business. Unless you get thrown money at you. Someone throws you money that, you know... At that point, you don't need to get into debt. That's it. So... Stay out of debt. Stay out of debt <laughs> on a personal level as well. That is so far, I'm 53 years old. That's my number one life advice. If I'm dying tomorrow and you say, what's, what's the, the advice I give? It's stay out of debt personally and in the business. And um, follow the successful coaches that are out there. I mean, follow the advice of someone who's yeah. a billionaire or someone who's worth hundreds of millions of dollars that went from nothing. Don't, don't take advice from someone with no track record, someone who's not even in business. You know, that's the thing with LinkedIn now. It's like, you know, oh. a guy says CEO of whatever company and he's giving this advice and... He's you, alone. Yeah, he's alone or he doesn't even have... His company's not even... You know, it's... So, I, anyway, I don't want to be negative towards them. However, I think my, my biggest... You know, because I and we, I can say we, I think, started... Um, following Anthony Robbins, and this is a guy that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and he's proven, who, who introduced us to Jay Abraham, who's the same thing. He is actually a proven business guy that has the success to back it up, and it's verifiable, who introduced us to, or me, to, to Brian Tracy. So... To me, those that stay out of debt personally and stay out of debt in your business, and you know, listen to and follow those coaches because those coaches are actually really yeah. good. Well, I have so many. I'm gonna try to do quick. In my 20s, I did absorb a lot of books, audio books, pod, not much podcast at the time, but and but I would, I would just absorb without questioning. And without thinking. And without saying to myself, should I actually read this book? Is it going to just confuse me even more than what I, you know, where I am now? Um, I, to a point where after about 100 books, I was more confused. I had learned a lot, books. but I was, I was confused. Um, and I read my first book at 17. So in my 20s and probably for the 50 years after I did read a lot of books um, so that's first um, pick and choose what you gonna be learning um, be extremely patient um, because you will overestimate what you're gonna achieve in the next five years but underestimate what you're gonna achieve in the next ten you know um, um, I, I'm happy that I didn't know how hard it would be because I'm not sure I would have done it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I, will, I, I have a follow up question to that. And I would have probably not tell it to my younger self. I said, no, that's going to be great, man. You're gonna go for it. Go for it. You're going to learn a lot. Believe me. Um, um, yeah, it's. Model someone or people that did similar to what you're trying to achieve. Um, 
Yeah, exactly. So model like, someone like, that actually has success yeah. and, and, and is verifiable. Yeah. Too, you know? And, uh, but something I did just naturally that I would tell though to someone else is uh, just do shit, just try it. You know, even if you don't feel comfortable, mm. just try it. And, um, and I did so many different things over the, you know, over the years from, from, I was not so manual. Uh, I did electricity and I did plumbing and I did all of those things. But, but you learn a lot by doing a lot too. So yeah. So what is your follow-up question? I think just to add to what I said, I want to just clarify. Like if if you have a C like C level executive or an owner of a company that you built or you were part of building that, that is big, has maybe two or three hundred employees, this is also someone that you need to oh. seek advice from, you know? And someone like that, if you catch them properly, you know, don't just send like an email and say, hey, you know, uh, you, know, you, you, know you, you have to cultivate a relationship with someone like that. But someone like that is normally really open to giving advice, uh, you know? So to me that, so yes, the Anthony Robbins, Jay Abraham, Brian Tracy, like Brian Tracy to me changed my business life. And it was just random that I came across him. But also the C-level executives and the owners of, of those big companies are, are a huge, huge resource for, for learning. And I, and I had to read about that saying that if you're looking for mentorship, mm -hmm. you have to be a committed mentee. Mm -hmm. uh, because obviously if you try to get those advice from a C-level or an owner and you don't do much of what he or she teach you, yeah. you're going to lose that relationship in no time. Yeah. They don't want to lose that time. The same way as a personal trainer, you know? We'll but, like, that reminds, so we both, we both had the same mentor, same business mentor, Fred DiFrancesco was his name. He passed away a few years ago, um, but before we became owners of Simply PHP, and that's kind of how we ended up getting connected. We had the same mentor, and he was a guy that came from nothing, built an empire, uh, oil and gas and real estate empire, and he was a guy that loved giving us advice. But if you don't follow it and do the opposite. Yeah then they lose interest in you. Right? I actually, I never saw a guy <laughs> liking it that much. I would call him randomly any time, so yeah. he would just spend the time. He enjoyed, yeah, he so enjoyed well, mentoring don't come over? people. Yeah. yeah, he enjoyed mentoring people. That was his, yeah. uh, that was his gift for sure, one of his gifts for yeah. sure. But yeah, and, and if you don't find the right coach the first time, you know, keep looking. It's like uh, anything else, you know, you can't go yeah. and fail and then say, well, yeah, I tried that, it didn't work, you know, you have to really uh, go It's not, it. actually, it's not something you look for, it just happens. Yeah. But at a minimum, you know, and I, at, a, at a minimum, you need to be, you got to have your, your nose in those, um, those business coaches and yeah. those life coaches uh, programs, the successful ones, right? Yeah. The ones that are just starting out, I don't know, let them coach other people uh, and let them work their way up but you know if you, you have, we all have access to the top people in the world so yeah my other my follow-up question is <laughs> so would you do it all over again <laughs> would you do it all over again first of July 2020 2010 are you in <laughs> no. I don't know if I'm in I don't think so no no <laughs> well no. you would have to be but you know, no, but I mean, be, I, mean, I mean, starting yeah. something new from scratch tomorrow, that would be exciting because yeah. I have all the baggage and all the experience and everything that I yeah. wouldn't want to repeat. Yeah. Uh, but if, if no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. The no. end result is great though. Like, you know, we're, we're super happy. And, uh, it's cool. People don't understand how difficult it is. They just don't understand. Like back then, like I had, I opened my first business, my first quote unquote business was a registered company at 16 and um, there was no such things as entrepreneurship and making it famous and all of those you know and I opened a second one at 18 and 
that was hard already, and I didn't have to deal with employees. But when you grow and now you start having to deal with people, it gets even harder. And as you grow, it gets even harder, and it becomes expo exponentially harder. Because you have, it's, it's a thing to have employees from 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. Each time, it's a different gap, it's a different learning, it's mm. a different, different problems, and 30 to 40, 40 to 50. It, and 200, 1,000. Imagine having 1,000 employees that you don't even know by name. That's different. That's completely different. It's so, a good question. Yeah. So it's 10 minutes to 12. How are you guys feeling answering maybe two more questions? Good. Is that good? Yeah. yeah. I don't have a time limit, personally. As they come. Yeah. All right, so the question is, for a new PHP programmer, what should the approach be to become an expert? Should he or she jump into some PHP frameworks or learning the fundamentals of code? Where should they focus and learn the core language? I am the type of guy that learn on its way, on its own, and, and by hustling and grinding and I uh, to me that's my recipe doesn't mean it's the recipe for everyone um, but I can say out of any doubt that all of the great programmers I saw were doing programming at home at night and weekends they were grinding they were learning and I think I can say that all of the ones that didn't do that and only program at work stayed mostly average developers. Um, and, and it's not negative or positive or judgmental. It's a fact that if you are passionate about what you do and you do it at home after work and you keep learning and digging, and that's how you get above the average. When you spend 16, 17, 18 hours a day on that, I do believe that you're gonna get extremely good, but it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. Not everyone wants to work so long, um, uh, do eight, nine hours of work a day and go home and keep coding. Not everyone wants to do that. It's fine, it's fine. But grinding is, is, is probably my second last name. And, 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 and that's how I've learned. That's how I've learned. I've learned more by grinding than going to the university. Simple as that. Yeah. And, and to a point where I didn't want to finish my university degree. It was too boring for me. So um, learn, find the answer. But you know what? There's something I was doing that really helped me, but I don't know if it's just me being lazy or or just not wanting to waste time, but any time that I would be stuck with something, I wouldn't research for hours, I would just go ask someone the answer. And I did that so often, to a point where some people were really annoyed by my questions. Mm -hmm. I would, at the time, I would go on RC and, and I would just bug people to give me the answer, and, and that's how I ended up learning faster, probably. Um, but there's a lot of, and you need, imagine, even, even early 2000, there was resource online. Imagine today. There's no reason for someone to not be able to learn faster than I did mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. There's so many resources from Stack Overflows to, uh, there's probably even Discord channels that, uh, you know, can answer that. And, and uh, there's so many resources, so. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll ask one more question and then we'll, close with some last re, last minute remarks uh, over the last 10 years or however you want to sign off, okay? Okay. So the last question from LinkedIn is, what's your opinion on WordPress and the fact that after three years of WordPress site has been over 80% chance to crash due to bugs and course missed by uh, complaints and plugins and updates? Oh, it's a long question. There's, there's a lot of benefits to use it, especially when things are simple. 
Um, but personally, I wouldn't use it on a complex website. Um, so I guess that answers my opinion of it. Does that, does that mean like a lot of people use WordPress when it's not really, it, WordPress is intended for specific purposes and so many people use WordPress when they should not be using WordPress yeah. because WordPress developer might be, might be cheaper, more accessible. Could be that too. It's, it's not too hard to, to deal with, but when you start having, I mean, when you have to start coding inside it, mm -hmm. that's when you're going to start creating problems, especially if you're not a programmer and especially if the progra programmer doesn't know much about WordPress. <laughs> Yeah. So already there, like you need a programmer yeah. that knows WordPress, wants to work with WordPress, which pretty much doesn't exist. And um, yeah. yeah, but then, you know, if you use it, that's just a content management system. That's totally, that's going to be fine. That's totally going to be fine. Some simple websites and yeah. I know I've, I've seen several uh, people call uh, prospects and they have these very very complex uh, platforms and the developers sometimes would say and they use WordPress for this it's like just uh, doesn't make sense right yeah. mm -hmm. but WordPress is awesome for like Raf said simple stuff oh, we, we've used it for some nonprofit that we help yeah, works yeah all, very the, well. uh, all the nonprofits that we help uh, yeah it's, it's mainly with WordPress yeah because we don't exaggerate <laughs> the use yeah you know we don't start coding in the core and, and changing shit, and so. Um, so what we do, maybe I'll mention a nonprofit thing, and this is something we've been doing for several years now, um, is because we we sometimes have occasions where some of our programmers or designers are available, and they don't have a project right away. It, it might be you know a case, a case of a couple of days, sometimes a week or two. Yeah. And what we do in those uh, circumstances is we seek out nonprofits and we help them. Um, basically, hey, do you need help with anything web related? We happen to have a resource, give us your wish list, and we'll throw on these resources when they are available. And that works really well. The criteria for the nonprofit, though, um, before anyone gets too excited, the criteria for the nonprofit is that no one involved in that nonprofit uh, can be making a salary. So if you have a, for example, a soccer associ association and they're all volunteers. So that's someone that, that we help, you know, minor league sports, all volunteers. But the minute there's, you know, like there's uh, two or three people on the payroll, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's, we have to have some type of criteria. Yeah. And uh, that's the criteria. So well, we have to imp we have to like the cause, the cause too. Oh yeah, we have to like the cause. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> exactly. I remember that's once, important too. I remember once we had a, we had a nonprofit that reached out to us. Yeah. And uh, they had an interesting cause, uh, but they they wanted to get things done way too fast for us. Yeah, that's another thing. They have to sort of follow our pace because. The way the system works is that the developer, the programmer, or designer will work on their yeah. case when they're available. Which you know, it's not going to take them a really long time. But yeah, we had a nonprofit say, "Okay, well, this is our yeah. deadline, and uh, you got to reach it." And we're like, uh, <laughs> if, 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 there's, if, "If there's a question that came in in the meantime, like, feel free to ask." Mm. Okay, um, I'm just looking on. What's uh, wait? Let me ask you a question. What's uh, your favorite nonprofit that we've helped? <laughs> that we've helped. You're really asking? Yeah. Yeah, I want to know. Well, to me, the and it's it's not because of the relationship, but the Hammerband is is definitely for me the biggest and, and the most pleasant from day one because the way that Moshe called and spoke to you and the kindness that there was in the conversation and all, mm -hmm. it, day one, day one, from day one. Oh, that's cool. I think we were five years in, uh, going there to their, to their event at fall every year. 
Oh, he's teaching been, uh, me violin. We've been with them for five years. Well, at least four to five. Wow. At least five years. Yeah, I think it's five years now. Well, we, we, yeah, we started on the uh, previous office. So oh, I'd say, uh, yeah. wow, that's good. Yeah, so a uh, great relationship with him, and and his cause is is extremely good. Mm. Extremely yeah. good. So, uh, but just by the kindness of the person and the the intention and and. and just that itself was already making the, the this to be the the best to me. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah. yeah. So I have my favorite. I'll mention in a second. But um, so the Hammer Band is based in Toronto, and they provide underprivileged children uh -huh. with uh, violin classes. Violin classes. So they provide them with the violin classes. So Basically, they can. It's like a it's like a music school, yeah. but they don't have to pay. They anything. go in school, actually, and and. Or they go in school. Yeah, okay. They give the class in school oh, okay. for most of them, and their their slogan is actually from uh, violence to violin. From violence to violence. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> so uh, that's nice. That's nice. Um, it's nice that I, I think you went to a eh, Kyler. Yeah, we went um, uh, for one of their last main, October, uh, yeah. main events. And yeah, and you filmed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's on our YouTube events. channel. Yeah, that's one of the yeah. one of the best videos. They even cooked for us, him and his wife. <laughs> yeah, nice. especially his wife. <laughs> nice. That yeah, was it's that. Good. Yeah. Nice. That no, was really really cool. Thing. And he's such a he's such a great soul because you know he's teaching me violin. But the other day I have, I have a I have a problem with my arm. So when I when I play it's it it hurts and the other day I could not play much so I told him I text him said nah you know I, I would like to but it's too hard let's just have a call so we get on mm. zoom and we spoke for half an hour <laughs> just like cool. that that's cool you know so I think my favorite was uh, room to read true room to read was cool that's an organization that uh, builds schools for girls in I believe it was Africa or Asia so where girls don't really have the same opportunities as boys um, room to read build schools and that was uh, yeah. and again it's the same thing it was the vibe of the people on the ground here in Montreal yeah. that were because room to read sort of like a global thing and the Montreal chapter they were awesome really really nice uh, nice group of people that were running it and there was a fundraising event we did their website we did some landing pages for them yeah um, yeah so that was cool yeah that was nice nice so we are at 12 o'clock um do you guys have any final kind of thoughts 10 year anniversary anything you want to tell our audience um just any final thoughts going on in your head right now we said a lot of things, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We did. There's, there's, there's one thing that just came back to my mind that um, about a question that got asked earlier, like the um, you know mo be most memorable moments or things like that. There's one thing that, despite how it ended, despite many things, there's one thing that I think we're probably gonna always gonna remember is that there's a bunch of guys that because we partner with the university, there's a bunch of guys that we got them the opportunity to come in Canada and get their work permit, get their permanent residency and have a new life here, right? So, and not that we did something so crazy and they, they, they owe us their life, it's not that, but it's, it, it, it feels good. It feels good to feel that there's five or six guys that that are here today and, and having a great life and in their country they didn't have such a great life and some of them are having you know there's one of them I think has a baby the other one is married and it's fun you know that's cool and so I think, th I think there's more like 10 oh maybe Five maybe I just seven? forgot yeah I think there's more like 10 I think you're right I think yeah, you're right yeah. Yeah. yeah and quite a few yeah but um, that was with um, McGill University yeah. the uh, ASIC yeah. Um, global something program. Yeah. 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 And yeah, honestly, cool. that was that was hard because remember there was a few that were not good. 
Yeah. And we didn't want to return them to their to their country, obviously, right? Didn't so, want to return them. <laughs> so, so we had to deal with that and tried our best and mm. you know tried our best to make it a win-win situation and so that's something we're personally proud of. You know. Yeah, that was uh, that was interesting on a, on a couple of occasions where they tested really well. So, like, let's say for example, they were somewhere in South America and they tested really well and nice Skype interviews and everything. And so we brought them over to to Montreal to Canada and to work with us for like a year. And then in exchange, you know, well, they were paid. But they also, that was part of the program that they could get their permanent residency uh, and become Canadians. And on a couple of occasions, they, they weren't that good. Like, we made a mistake, you know, we hired them. And, and like, like Raf said, you can't just send them back. That's, that would be life damaging. So we found a way to, to make them work here, you know, like we, able, we gave them like a, to, um, a project to work on internally, like our CRM system, our invoicing system. We said, okay, let's throw him on that, you know, yeah. which was uh, special. <laughs> not exactly the best thing, <coughs> but it, we, we couldn't really put them on clients because they kept on making mistakes or just didn't have the yeah. right energy level or, or something. But uh, but once in a while, I see pictures of them, and uh, they, they seem to have a great life, and I'm just happy of that, you know. It's yeah. Just, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, that is cool. So it's that memorable. Cool. Yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, yeah, there's a lot of good parts of the past ten years. That's for sure. There's yeah. more uh, more good parts than bad, and of course, you you always forget the bad parts. So. Any plans for um, the next ten, next decade, next ten years? That's way too far from me. <laughs> yeah. It's like so nice. whatever I taught last year is not exactly what happened so I ended up not thinking too far in advance because we change people change vision change value changes uh, society changes that too the world changes mm -hmm. yeah. so uh, <laughs> we'll see we'll see yeah. you know we'll see what's gonna happen like today we're about like 35 40 people and if if next year we're 50 or 60 then that's gonna be that if we're still 40 that's gonna be that you know, so we'll see. I think it's important, as corny as this might sound, it's important, and that's the riddle of business, is you treat your clients and your staff the way you would want to be treated, whether you're a, a client or an employee, and everything else takes care of itself, you know. So that's the riddle of business. I remember be just before I get 30 years old, I wrote a letter to myself. <laughs> Uh, about what I wanted to achieve, where I wanted to be at by 35. I'm nowhere near that at 41. So I ended up just being, you know, accepting that do your best you can every day and it's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen eventually. You just have to have faith. And But because when you set your expectation too far or too high, too quick, you just end up being disappointed. And uh, so I'm more relaxed these days, you know, at 41 than I, I was at 28. Hmm. Ten year, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome, guys. Well, um, the questions, uh, people are signing off slowly, so I think okay, it's cool. time to Good. wrap up. And hey, thanks to everyone for, for tuning in. Um, I know it's probably not the most exciting thing in the world, but it is for us, so... This is the way we wanted to celebrate our 10th anniversary. Yeah. We're going to have a bench press competition uh, <laughs> later on. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of us want to do that. A lot of us want to see that. Yeah. 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 We'll have to make it happen. Awesome, guys. So yeah. I'm going to transition. Thank you all for joining. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.